We're going to be hearing from two state legislators now, and then after that we've got some time reserved for Q&A, uh, followed by a short message of inspiration from Mark Meckler. The, the two uh, state legislators are Senator Kevin Lundberg and Representative Lori Sane. Representative... <laughs> Representative Lori Sane and Senator Kevin Lundberg have both been loyal and hardworking members of the first committee that I referred to before. Uh, Representative Sane has served as a spokesman here in Colorado for the National Debt Relief Amendment, which you heard uh, Bob promoting earlier. Kevin is actually, Senator Lundberg is actually co-chairman of, of the National Article 5 Caucus, that is to say, the National Organization of State Legislators designed to disseminate information about Article 5 at a convention of states. I'd like to invite both of them to the podium right now, and they can tell you about what is coming up next in the Colorado Legislature. I'll grab the mic first here. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and are endowed with the unalienable rights of life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men. To secure these rights, Governments are instituted among men. I've been a state legislator for now, I'm in my 12th year, and I have yet to see a government that's dedicated to securing our God-given rights. Now let me tell you a little about, bit about federalism. You've heard that term mentioned here. Federalism is that balance of power between the federal government and the states. It's that understanding that our founding fathers put in place that government must be balanced against itself in order to limit the authority and the power and the scope and the reach of that government or governments. Now, of course, they set the different branches of government to balance at the federal level mirrored somewhat in the states. But the real key to limitation is the states versus the federal government. That's the concept of federalism, that the states have authority, as the Tenth Amendment states, beyond everything, beyond what we find enumerated in Article I, Section 8 of the U.S. Constitution. That's the way it's supposed to work. I can tell you, as a state legislator for the last 12 years, state legislatures are nothing more than a lapdog for Congress. Take whatever subject, Obamacare, transportation, water issues. We are subject to federal rules and regulations that limit virtually every piece of legislation that comes our way. That is why it is essential that we not accept this, that we move forward with the principles of federalism and we utilize the tool that we were given in the Constitution in Article 5. If you read Federalist Paper Number 85, the final document written in that list of uh, arguments for the Constitution, it states clearly, it's actually Alexander Hamilton who wrote it, who said, this is why we put Article 5 there, in case the federal government gets out of control. Well, the federal government is out of control. The time has come for us as states to limit their power, even as we were granted that authority within the Constitution initially. That is why Tuesday of this week, I, along with Representative Sane, introduced the Convention of the States Resolution it was today read right across the, uh, the desk in the Senate. It was uh, uh, assigned to the uh, State Affairs Committee, which is commonly known as the Kill Committee. 
I don't expect it to be a smooth path, but it's the first step we're going to take to take back our freedoms. Ladies and gentlemen, let me, uh, let me presume that your standing ovation means you're with me. You're with us. Now let me give you a plan of attack. Two or three things, and I'll try to be brief and, and then allow Representative Sane to speak as well. This will be heard in a public hearing before state affairs. It's a five-member committee, three of the other party who it's known as the Kill Committee, and that's because that's where we expect them to go. But that's just the first step, as I say. We have to take this first step. You might call it to Normandy Beach. You know, there are going to be some casualties. But we have to do it with force, with overwhelming superiority, so that ultimately we will prevail. That's the first step. But there are many other steps, because I've noticed that about 95%, no, probably 99% of all votes cast in the state legislature have been determined on election day because whoever you send to the legislature determines how they vote. So our real job, I believe, is in November to find candidates who will stand with us as well. It was mentioned that I'm the uh, co-chairman for the Article 5 Caucus, a National State Legislators Caucus. We have a website. I'd like you to write it down. Article5caucus.com. And that's article no room and no. <laughs> sometimes I can talk and sometimes I can't. Roman numeral 5, a V. So articlevcaucus.com. You can sign up there as an observer, which means a supporter of, of our caucus, or if you're a state legislator, you can sign up as a member who agrees with the principles of federalism. Or if you are a candidate for state office, you can sign up as a member as well. We want candidates to be declaring themselves in support of the principle of federalism and the process of the Article 5 amending system. So please, do what you can to help support in that area as well, articlevcaucus.com. And finally, as I say, this November, we have to change the legislature in Colorado, as I'm sure we'll have some discussion in a few moments about elsewhere in the country. Thank you very much. Folks, the Constitution was meant to restrict the federal government and not the states. Right. Article 5 is not revolutionary, it is restorationary. And we have sitting with us today the Founding Fathers. These are our restor restorationists, these gentlemen right here. And now you are included in that movement. So I want to have you all give yourselves a hand because you are restorationaries. <laughs> Now, I'd like to ask, how many of you are constitutionalists a la carte? How many of you are a sixth, seventh constitutionalist? There's at least one. There's at least one in the audience. There are some people that say, well, I love the Constitution. It's a God-breathed document, but oh, that Article 5. Mm. Oh, that is a self-destruct button. But let me tell you what the Founding Fathers thought of Article 5. It was so important, it was the last closing argument of the last Federalist paper, Federalist number 85. Folks, you don't use your weakest argument as your last argument. This is the last Federalist paper before the Constitution was ratified. It was that important. Now, here's what I'd like to say, just in brief, about the myth of a runaway convention. Because a runaway convention is a myth. But a runaway Congress is a reality. <laughs> and
And we can tell from electing my guy, my, my guy's gonna go to Washington and get it done. My guy's gonna do it. Well, folks, we now know that Washington, D.C. will never fix Washington, D.C. They will never do it. Let me read for you just real quick that last Federalist paper, what they said. We may safely rely on the disposition of the state legislators to erect barriers against encroachment of national authority. And they took this seriously. Founding fathers often described public officials in fiduciary terms. And it was serious. This wasn't just an ideal. This is a core principle of government. And if somebody breached that trust, there was a couple measures that were used. One was impeachment, and the second was removal. So Professor Nadelson has found that since the founding era, there has been many conventions. There has been conventions before the Constitution. There has been conventions afterwards, multi-state conventions. And not one of those ran away. And in fact, the commissioners may have given five topics, but it's always one state, one vote. And there are already 200 years of court decisions upholding Article 5. 200 years, including the SCOTUS decision, upholding the intent, the legislative intent of the Founding Fathers. And the legislative intent is important. We can read it. That was the intent, was to use Article 5. And not only is it our right to use Article 5, it is our duty to use Article 5. <laughs> For our children and our children's children for the kind of country we want to leave behind for them. And a lot of folks think that we have seven trillion in debt, but that's the tip of the iceberg. It's a hundred trillion in unfunded liabilities. And the National Debt Relief Amendment has men mentioned several times, and I have represented that organization across the nation. Um, it is a brainchild of restoringfreedom.org, if you'd like to write that down. Some good information on there. But the one of the nice things about the National Debt Relief Amendment is there are some good BBAs, and there are some BBAs that are, have holes big enough to have trucks roll right through them. They're filled with statutorily redefinable terms. Well, the National Debt Relief Amendment, as you heard, is 18 words. Again, those 18 words are, increasing the federal debt requires approval from a majority of the legislatures of the several states. And the word debt is used because it is all encompassing. They can't get around it, and they can't use the Supreme Court. So essentially, this extends the power of Article 5 because now they have to come to the states, the government closest to the people, for permission to use their credit card. That is huge, folks. And at times of war or times of emergency, we can give them permission to do that. So again, I'm going to leave you with this. What kind of country do we want to leave behind? Because Patriots take action. The first duty of a patriot is to be vigilant. But the second is to take action. And this was left to us by our founding fathers. It is our duty to use it because if we saw what was going on in Washington, D.C., and this is not right, we can use the power of Article 5 to restrain the federal government, which is why the Constitution was written. Thank you so much, folks. Thank you.